All right, guys, here we go again, man. Uh, beautiful day today. So, who, who do you have the pleasure to meet today? I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah. How you doing, sir? What's your name? Mike. Mike. Morning, Mike. How old are you, Mr. Mike? 77. 77 years old. Okay. So, hey, Mike, uh, how's life treating you so far today? <laughs> Not too well. Uh, Not too well, huh? I, I'm epileptic and I'm discriminated against. Oh, you tell me what I can't do instead of asking me what I can do. Really? I'm a trained computer programmer and they won't hire me. A tr computer program? Wow. How long were you doing that, that type of job? Oh. I haven't really had a chance to do that type of job uh, because they wouldn't hire me. And I'm, I'm trained to do it, but they're not letting me do it. They're not giving you a chance and, and an opportunity. I, I don't understand huh? that because I'll be sitting on my rear end. If I have a seizure, the worst I can do is drop a pencil. Will it stay on the desk? Or will it hit the floor where the shag carpet is with the foam padding underneath it? Will I even break the lid? And they're, oh, they're talking about insurance. The ignorant fools is all I can say about them. Yeah. They're very ill-informed. Right, yeah. And uh, they're missing out on someone that has the, the ability to do the job. Right, then nobody wants to, especially the uh, Nobody They wants don't want to give you an chance. opportunity, right? Do what? They don't want to give you an opportunity. Uh -uh. No, the, the, the idea of a seizure scares them. Right. Lawsuits and, and so forth, right? Well, I've told them I'd sign a waiver to insurance, right? Oh. In other words, I wouldn't have insurance at all. They wouldn't have to worry about it. Right. I mean, I made offers like that so I could get a job. Right. And they wouldn't hire me. They wouldn't hire you. So I've done tree work. Mm -hmm. okay. Fell out of one of them once. I was in the hospital for 13 days on that one. They had to put me back together. Yeah. Oh, you got... Oh, man. Hold on. That's what the scar is from. Oh, wow. Uh... How, how high were you when you fell, Mike? 13 feet. 13 feet, man. Fell 13 feet and I was in the hospital 13 days. <laughs> one day for each foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was I was back to working in the trees again uh, 12 days after I got out of the hospital. Wow. So where uh, originally are you from, Mike? Uh, well, I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana. And my father was in the oil business. Okay. And I don't know much about his business, except I know he advised people where to poke the hole to find the oil. Well, okay. That's about all I know about it. So how'd you end up here in Beeville? I was just passing through, uh, going from uh, Indianapolis where my sons live, uh, back down around Corpus Christi. Corpus. And I promised some people I'd be back down there. There's some kids that are living under the high bridge down there where their mother lives. She stays inside her vehicle and smokes cigarettes all day while the kids are outside. And one of them's only 16, well, two of them are 16, one of them's a girl who just gave birth to twins. And the cigarette smoking mom, is, the grandmother, is threatening to take the babies away from the girl. Wow. And that's the worst thing she could do. That girl, if she's stupid enough to get knocked up at that age, she should uh, at least have to raise her babies. Right, right. And that way, uh, she might learn how to be a, uh, uh, actually learn how to be a mother and a grown woman someday. Yes. If you take the babies from her, she don't have a reason to learn. Absolutely. And she does have a reason to be resentful. That's right. And a resentful teenager is not easy to deal with. Yeah. Absolutely right. So what are your current situations right now, Miss Mike? Basically homeless. Homeless, okay. Uh, unemployed. Uh, I always say unemployable, but that's not true. I am employable, but they won't hire me because of my epilepsy. I'm medically controlled, so I don't have seizures. Okay. If I didn't take the medicine, I could have them and would have them. Do you carry your medication with you? Yeah, when someone doesn't steal it. Really? I, I'm out of medication right now. I had it stolen during the night. I'll be Just, that doesn't happen very often. Right. I figure that if someone that knows me 
it's trying to cause me trouble. Most of that kind of stuff is done by somebody that knows you. Oh, definitely, yeah. You're right about somebody that. has a reason to want to cause you some trouble. And usually, say, they're looking at something they might benefit if I have problems. Right. And uh, I'll see to it that they don't, that's the promise. I see. So what's a, what's a typical day look like for you, Mike? Nothing to look forward to, that's for sure. More bullshit. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. I'm tired of it. But I keep going. I just don't try to do the things I've tried to do most of my life. I just gave up on it. I'm 77. They don't, they don't want to hire a 77-year-old anyway. Going back to those uh, epilepsy, uh, how old were you when you got... When I was diagnosed with that. I started having seizures when I was six years old. Six years old. I was almost seven. Okay. And been saddled with it ever since. So, so how do you maintain yourself? How do you, uh, you know, uh, do you boost? Do you panhandle or? Oh, no, uh, I won't do that. Uh, I try to do some work. Uh, I've done tree work, I've done lawn work, I've painted houses, I've done roofing, I've done framing, I've <laughs> installed doors and windows, I've widened doors for uh, families who have someone with a wheelchair. And I don't know why in the world they don't build houses with wider front doors, but yes I do, they're too damn cheap to do it right. If you put a wide door on there, and when your grandparents come in in a wheelchair, they can get in. Right. I've, I've seen families where the grandparents had to stay in a motel when they came to town to visit because they couldn't get into the kid's house. Now, can you say stupid? Now, that's cheapskate by the, build, by the building contractor. Right. And that's the way that is. So you need to watch who you do your building with. Yeah. And hire someone that'll do it right the first time instead of having to redo it. You know, uh, right now, so you're not struggling with any type of substance or anything like that? Just, uh, I don't even smoke cigarettes. Uh, mm-hmm. You have any? I, I know you mentioned some. Uh, you got you got children. You know what? Do you have any children? Two of them. Two. One of them behaves pretty well, and one of them's pretty rotten. And that's the best analogy I can give you. The rotten one's on meth. He's a speed freak and a thief. He needs to have his ass kicked up to his teeth, but he's airborne. It's going to be a, a challenge for somebody. <laughs> and he has a size 12 boot he can plant flat in your face any time. So um, my advice is stay away from him. <laughs> well, because he'll hurt you if you don't. Yeah. Where are your kids at right now at this moment? Where are they at right now? Where am I? No. Where are your kids are at? They uh, live in Indianapolis, where their mother is. Oh. Okay. I don't like it if it's too cold. <laughs> yeah. And I don't really want to want to get into all of that up there. I have a tendency to try to fix problems. Okay. And there's so many people on the face of this earth. They don't give a damn enough to try to fix a problem, not even of their own, much less somebody else's. That's right. Yeah. A lot of people That's like right. that out there. I think we're in a sick country right now myself. Definitely. Uh, if we don't change that, I'm not sure we're going to survive. That's right. If you don't have people that care about each other, how can you believe they care about the country? That's right. If, and if that's the case, how long do we, are we going to last the way we are? How long are we going to remain to be a free nation? Yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of a coin flip. Right. And I don't think anyone has the answer, and I don't know that we ever will. You're right about that. So how was your childhood growing up? How was your childhood growing up? Well, I had alcoholic parents, so that wasn't cool. I had to be the parent a lot of the time, You'd break up the fights. Uh, I was uh, discriminated against because of the epilepsy, but the same kid that discriminated against me at school would call me, Mike, how do you do the homework? which I'd say go to hell and hang up on them. Yeah. And my mother said, Mike, who are you so rude to? I said, none of your damn business. I took care of it myself. And that was the end of it. And they'd uh, whine to a teacher at school the next day. And I'd say, as long as they bully me or make fun of me 
or in any way do me wrong, I will not help them. I don't give a damn what you say. You want to kick me out of school? I can go home right now. I sat there, nothing happened. Right. Have you ever had a secure, a good secure job, Mike? Well, that's kind of a loaded question. When you have an affliction of any sort, especially like epilepsy or bad back, the idea of job security is, is it's kind of like a fleeting dream. It's just it's not going to happen. Uh, they find a way to get rid of you when they don't like it when you have a seizure. And basically they say, I'm sorry, so our group insurance won't cover you. Yeah. And I say, then you have crappy insurance. I tell you what I'll do, I'll sign a waiver to insurance rights because I need a job and they won't do that. And it would, it would cover them if I signed a waiver to insurance rights, right. they wouldn't have any problem. Right, yeah. But they won't, they won't let me do that. They, they don't want to take a risk, right. Um, but they will hire a wetback. Yeah, oh definitely. They hire illegal people all the time, but they won't hire me. Right, due to your circumstances. Do it. Due to your circumstances, yeah. right, yeah. Oh. But at least I'd be legal. You're right, yeah. Oh. When you look yourself in the mirror, what do you see? Whether or not I need a shave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't I never never thought about that. I don't see anything different about me than I see about you. Uh-huh. You can't detect the thing that is different about me by looking at me. Right. If I don't tell you I'm epileptic, you'll never know it. Unless I have a seizure in front of you, and the likelihood of that's pretty slim. As long as I take my medicine, I'm not going to have problems. Right. Now, somebody has stolen my medicine, so I'm going to have problems until I oh, get yeah. some medicine. If you had three wishes, what would they be? If you, you had what? three wishes, what would they be, Mike? <laughs> I've never even thought about that. I don't believe in that stuff. I don't think wishing does one damn bit of good. I think if, you, if, you're gonna, if something's gonna happen in your life, you've gotta make it happen. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that uh, wishing works. Right. It works in the movies. Kind of like the song says, it's all in the movies. Oh, okay. That's about what wishing's all about. Hey Mike, due to your due to your circumstances, uh, what kind of advice would you give these people out there? They're suffering from, uh, you know, seizures, epilepsy, or they're going through a, a, a rough, rough time. Well, number one, you go to your doctor, get your prescription, and don't skip your medicine. Take it, or you will have seizures. If you don't want to have seizures, take your medicine. The problem is, some of those jackasses that have seizures like it. Right. They don't like having the seizure, per se, but they like what having the seizure does for them. They don't have to do anything. Right. They're not allowed to do anything if they have seizures, so they don't have to do anything, and they're happy with that. They're happy with that. And that uh, produces a lot of um, useless people. Right, yeah. Because they're, those that are, they're already useless anyway, and the seizure just helps keep them that way. Yeah. Uh, just because you have seizures don't mean you're useless. Right. But it does mean that most likely you won't be given a fair chance. Right. Okay. And I don't know any other way to say that. Yeah. Hey, Mike, I was thinking, uh, what do you say we, uh, we try to give you a new look, man? Do what? A new look. Get you some new shoes, uh, maybe a pair of pants or shorts or new T-shirt, anything. Okay. Yeah. You down with that? Yeah, I'm all right with that. Okay. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we would like to see the, the new mic, <laughs> the before and after. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. All right, guys, we'll be back. Mm. So what do you think, Mike? No, I, I can't hear you. What do you think about the shoes and the shirt and all that? I needed them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Need him. Got another shirt. You know? Yeah. 
I know even though you uh, even though you didn't want to uh, get some get some uh, shorts or pants. Yeah, I don't I don't wear shorts. And the shorts, warm ups or anything. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Mike, what you gotta say about this new look, man? Shoes, a new shirt. It look a lot better than I did. <laughs> yeah, that's what I um, we like doing this, trying to help people out. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. This is Skid Row, Texas. Yeah. Trying to kind of try to. Uh, Bring up your low self-esteem, you know what I'm saying? Feel well, better up, you know, for yourself. It'll help some people, and some people it won't make any difference. You sure right, yeah. They, uh, they, those suffer from a really bad case of depression. Right about And they need to be on antidepressants, but I don't think anyone's going to help them with that. Right. They need to. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you it would, it would prevent some suicides and maybe some anger committed crimes. That's right, yes. It would, in the long run, probably save her money if they spent the money on, on the antidepressant. Right. I just want to give you uh, this to you, Mike, from all of us. Thank you. It's a little personal hygiene kit right there, man. Yep. Also, Mike, there's some uh, documentation, I mean, some, uh, some paperwork. Okay. It's gonna help you uh, if you need to find, uh, get your ID, driver license, birth certificate. I know you're going through a lot of issues with, uh, with you know, seizures and all that. Yeah. There's places that can help you out, try to get your medication again. Uh, that I need, someone stole it recently. Right, they're, they're willing to help you out. With, you know, there's a lot of resources right there, man. Hopefully you get, get back on that medication, you need it. If I know who a thief is, what can we do about the thief? Well, I know what I can do about him personally. Well, okay. it just takes a piece of pipe. Well, we don't want to go there, Mr. Mike. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. You may not, but I guarantee you, if I do, he'll never steal from me again. There you go. And you won't have to pay for feeding him in jail. That's right. You know, sometimes beating the hell out of a thief works wonders, and it don't cost the taxpayers money. That, that's that's the thing. We, I think we're catering to them. Yeah. Which I mean, it's not so bad. You got a place to stay for a while. And there are people that I've heard say, and I quote, "It's going to be a bad one tonight. We better do some shows. We'll get thrown in jail." They're looking forward to being in jail rather than being on the street. Something's wrong with that picture. Yeah. That needs to be changed. Where they have a different attitude about being in jail. Yeah. That's right, yeah, you're right about that. Uh, so what you gotta say now, Mr. Michael, now that I'll uh, kind of give you a little bit, a bit of look, a little bit more, you know? Yeah, look a little better and feel a little better. Okay, good, man. All right, well. The, uh, the main thing wrong with my feet now, someone stuck a knitting needle through my shoes into my feet. Yeah, oh, okay. And they can do that, I don't care what you're wearing. Yeah. And they will. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, Mike, uh, just wish you the best, man. Uh, just to keep Thank your head you. up. Try to stay positive, man. And well, my positive is if I catch a thief, meet the devil over the hell out of them so they don't come back. Yeah. If we put them in jail, that's taxpayers' expense, and that's free room and board. And if you want to really be honest about it, I've heard such people say it's going to be a bad one tonight we better do something so as we get thrown in jail yeah. in other words they're looking forward to being in jail rather than looking forward to being out in the bad weather oh definitely so but to them jail isn't punishment yeah. it's a free it's a free room and board situation for them yeah and they take advantage of it okay. i'm glad that's on film yeah people need to realize what's going on out there yeah well my god with this, uh, if you don't mind me sharing this on my YouTube channel, are you okay with that? It's all right. I tell you what, those people that, that they put in jail, they ought to put them on work crews yeah. and make them work 
they can stay in jail overnight because I have a place to sleep, but put them out there and put them to work. Yeah. There are things that need to be done in the city. That's right. Yeah. Do it. Help yeah. the community, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Mike, well, you know, thank you for your time, man. You're welcome. And uh, just. I wish you the best, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. Thank All you right. for the t-shirt. You're welcome, man. All right, thank you.